Hi, Michelle Seitz here. You're watching Book Formatting, Part 1, Setting the Styles. Here's the scenario. You have text for a book and you would like to format it and get it ready for publishing. Watch this and the subsequent videos to learn how to format the headers and footers for mirror margins, to create a table of contents, create new styles, chapter numbering, subtitles, as well as saving all of the formatting as a template for future use. While there are many parts to books, I am not here to teach you the different parts, but rather how to format a few of the parts so that you have a starting point. Publishing companies might have their own style guides or guidelines, so adjust the sections as necessary. I would like to take this time to thank the brilliant author Daria Ann DiGiovanni of Writestream Publishing LLC for writing the wonderful work of fiction of which I am about to preview to you in excerpts. I would also like to credit Matt Margolis of Logotecture, who was responsible for the original formatting of Ms. Di Giovanni's book, Water Signs. While the formatting I am about to present to you is not the original formatting by Mr. Margolis, I am taking liberties to expand on formatting techniques to give you a sense of a different way in which to present your book formatting. To save this as a template will take preparation. It may take some time, but it will be well worth it in the end. Start by formatting the styles. You are not limited to the styles within the program. You can make your own custom styles and name them with a custom name. You will probably be able to utilize some of the styles native to Word as well. You can always change the characteristics of the style to your specifications. So take some time to think about what you want. Many of the elements of a book will have different font styles and sizes. You may have a half title page. You'll have a title page with the book's title, subtitle, author names, logos, and publisher. You will have a copyright page. You may have other sections such as a foreword, acknowledgement, prologue, etc. And don't forget about the header text. Decide ahead of time what font style and size you want for each of these elements. Can some of the elements have the same font style and size? Do you want it left justified, centered, right justified? Do you want the chapter number to be spelled out or an Arabic number? Do you want it all caps, initial caps, or even lowercase? Do you want it bold or no bold? And because you do not want a lot of hard returns in your document, you need to decide what spacing you want, as well as add it to your style and eliminate those unnecessary hard returns. These are the things you need to think about before starting. However, they can be tweaked as you go along. I will start with normal text, but you can start with your own style. This will be the baseline for text used for the main body of the book. If the normal style is in the style gallery, right click on it and select modify. If it's not in the style gallery, click this little arrow in the bottom right and the style dialog box will open. Select the normal style and click the down arrow in the right and select modify. When the modify styles dialog box opens, select the font style and size. Don't get fancy. You want this text to be easy to read. Click on the full justification icon. If you want your style on the quick style gallery, click this box. Now click on the format tab and select paragraph. When this dialog box opens, select a 1.5 line spacing. Also in the after field, select six points. This way, whenever you hit the hard return, your paragraph will have a space between paragraphs without having to add extra hard returns. This is important when you change from paperback books to ebooks, so there will be no extra spaces. Now click OK and OK again. The first paragraph in the chapter will be normal style and size, so I don't need a custom style for that. The secondary paragraphs will be similar to the first paragraph, but with a first line indent. So I'll need to create a custom style so that I don't have to go into the paragraph dialog box each time to enter a first line indent. I don't want a tab in my text, so this is what I'll do. I'll open the style dialog box, and with a normal style selected, 
in the bottom left, I'm going to click the new style icon. Now I'll give the style a name. I'll call this secondary paragraph. Leave the style based on as normal. What this means is that the new style will start out with all the characteristics of the normal style, including the font face, size, color, spacing, etc. So you can just tweak the other characteristics. So it's important to select the style based on first. If you edit the other characteristics in this dialog box and then go back to this field and change it, all your characteristics will default back to the new style and you will have to start all over and add your specifications. The style for following paragraph should be the same name as the new style name in the name field. Click this box if you want to add it to the quick style gallery. Go to the format tab and select paragraph. In the dialog box in the special field, click the drop down and select first line. Change the size to 0.3. Now click OK and OK again. Now your new style is in the Styles dialog box. Next, edit the chapter title. In order to get your chapters into the table of contents and keep the styles consistent, I suggest using Heading 1 for the main chapter titles. You might want to start the chapter with a wide spacing before the text. If you have a subtitle and perhaps a quote or a graphic before the body of the text, keep the spacing in mind. You don't want to go much further than halfway down the page before starting the body of the text, so keep this in mind when you figure out the spacing. I'm going to make my chapters automatically numbered. So I'll go to the Home tab, and in the Paragraph group, click on Multi-Level List, and at the bottom of the drop-down, I'll select Define New List. Do not use Define New Multi-Level List. Name your new list style. I'll call this chapter list. Now click on the format tab and select numbering. In the number format field, I'll enter the word chapter before the number. I'm going to get rid of the paren and type in chapter. Since I want this initial caps, this is how I will type the word. In the number style for this level, click the drop down and make your selection for the format of the automatic number. Click on the font button and make all your selections for font size. Make note of the style you picked for the font because you may want to have the same font style for the Heading 1 text style. To learn more about heading numbering, watch my heading numbering video. Now click the button called More. This is very important because you must link this style to Heading 1 because you want it to be picked up in the table of contents and also in the navigation pane if you use it. After you entered all the characteristics, click OK and OK again. Now you have to modify the Heading 1 style. If you see the Heading 1 style in the Style Gallery, right-click on it and select Modify. If it's not in your Style Gallery, go to the Home tab and in the Style group, click the little arrow in the bottom right of the group, and the Style dialog box will open. Find Heading 1, click the arrow on the right, and select Modify. Style based on should be normal. Style following can be normal. Under the font style and size, I want bold and I want automatic coloring. I want my chapter title to be centered. If not already there, click Add to Quick Style List. Click on the Format tab and select Paragraph. I want my chapter text to be centered, so in the General field, I'll select Centered. You can also enter this on the center icon on the previous page. I want to have large space before and after my chapter text, so I'll add the spacing in the Before and After fields. I'm going to change the line spacing to Single. Click OK and OK again. You might have a subtitle below the chapter number and before the body of the text, so keep this in mind when deciding on spacing. If you have subtitle text, use the subtitle style. 
and format the characteristics to your specifications. If you want your table of contents to be displayed with different TOC levels, that is, for example, you have different parts in your book, that's, that is part one, part two, with the chapters beneath them, and you want the chapters indented in the table of contents, then you'll want another custom font for those sections. So for instance, you have a foreword, a prologue, part one, epilogue, about the author, that you want to be at TOC level one. And the chapters are TOC level two. To make the template as user-friendly as possible, make another custom style for those sections that you want at TOC level one. Call it whatever you like and add the characteristics to those sections as well. I will call them modules, but you can name them anything you would like. Since I want the module style to be based on subtitle, I'll start with my cursor on the subtitle line. I'll click the down arrow for the style dialog box and I'll click new style. Name your style. And since I had my cursor on the subtitle text, the style is based on subtitle. Now I'll add my characteristics. Now my module style is listed in my styles dialog box. Since I don't want the table of contents style to be displayed in the TOC, I will create a separate style for the word contents. I want it to be exactly like the module style, so I'll place my cursor on the word and I'll open up the style dialog box, click on modules, and then click on the new style icon. I'll give my style a name. I'll check all the characteristics and then I'll click OK. And now my new style is in the Styles dialog box. Now don't forget about the header text. When you click in the header and go into the Styles dialog box, you'll see header in the Styles dialog box. Click the down arrow and select Modify. Add all your characteristics. If you want your text expanded in the header, as many authors do, click on the arrow in the lower right of the font group. Now click on the Advanced tab. In the Spacing field, click the down arrow and select Expanded. And then if you want to increase the width between the letters, add more in the By field. And then click OK. I'm going to click Cancel because I don't want my text expanded. Now finish adding all the custom styles in your template. I will add a cover title, a cover subtitle, and a cover author style. Here's a tip. When you're done adding and editing your styles in the style gallery, remove any styles you won't use by hovering over the style in the style gallery. Right click and select remove from quick style gallery. If there's any styles you forgot to put in there, just open the style dialog box, find your style, click the down arrow, and select add to quick style gallery. Now all of my custom styles are in my styles dialog box. They are also displayed on the style gallery. And that is the end of part one, setting the styles.